Hello, hello, and welcome to the Holistic Fitness Podcast, where you'll learn how to get your goals without burning out. I'm your host, Laurie, and this show isn't just about movement and nutrition. You probably already know that exercise and nutrition is important for your mental and physical health and well-being. It's also about stress management, mindset, shedding those limiting beliefs, and working through some of that childhood trauma while you're at it. Today, I'm joined by Jenna Lee Anderson, who is a former corporate event planner turned integrative energy coach. She specializes in helping women transform burnout, reconnect to their purpose, and create tangible forward momentum. She is the founder of Expert You, a space where holistic health and science coexist to bring grounded awareness to the energetic dynamics that play a role in our everyday lives. For many years, she was creating memorable experiences throughout North America, but nowadays you'll find her speaking on podcasts, sharing her knowledge through thought-provoking articles, and expanding her perspectives of psychology and trauma, and spending time in nature with her camera and her dog Hugo, all while leading women through impactful change to the other side of burnout. I'm very excited to share our conversation with you all, which where we touch on topics like why women burn out, easy wins to get more energy during your day, and your purpose isn't what you do, and how aligning with your purpose helps create sustainable energy. I am really excited to share this conversation with all of you. As many of you know, I am an, an I still am an executive leader in corporate America as a woman while also having a business on the side and running this podcast. So I can definitely relate to finding your purpose and aligning that, but also getting burnt out and having a lot to do. So I know that this conversation with Jenna Lee helped me and it was a really interesting conversation in general. So I'm excited to share it with you all. How are you going today, Jenna Lee? I'm doing well. How are you? I am super good. Really excited to have you on the podcast and chat all things burnout. I've certainly seen a lot of burnout in the corporate world and also the fitness world. So really excited to dive in on these topics today. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm speaking from experience mostly. So it's, it's cool to be able to share my story if it helps other people. Definitely. And that's exactly how we start each podcast. So the great segue <laughs> into my first question that I always ask. I really feel like whenever somebody has a platform where they're speaking about burnout, fitness, yoga, nutrition, like whatever it is, there's some sort of backstory in how we got to the place where we want to help people in a specific way. So can you share the context that I would need to know to know why you help people in the way you do today? Yeah, um, I was in the corporate world for about 10 years planning corporate events. Um, And it's actually one of the top five most stressful jobs. It's like managing a huge project and having like 500 people there to make to see if something goes wrong, right? Like you can't push dates or anything. So it really... I thrived. The the type A part of me really thrived in that, but it was very stressful and took a toll on my health, which led me to kind of where I am today of working with energy and burnout and especially in women and seeing how that impacts their day-to-day life and what those narratives are around it that kind of keep us in that place. That's awesome. Well, it's not awesome that you experienced burnout. (laughs) That's not awesome at all, but it's awesome (laughs) that you have a way to help people now. I'm really curious. um, You mentioned being type A. You also mentioned it being like a high stress job where the project management, like there's 500 eyeballs on you. What kind of factors do you felt feel like led to your burnout specifically? Um, Part of it, I think, is there is a culture of burnout. Um, Mm. And I think it's almost encouraged to like go beyond the healthy point of giving, go beyond your boundaries, like sleep way less, like just get it done. And it's like that boss babe mentality maybe or (laughs) you know like that women can do it all and we can but it's not sustainable and I don't think we're meant to do it all Um, Mm. so I think that's one thing is just the culture um, that encourages that type of behavior in in our work Um, another thing that really impacted it was my relationship with myself and just not knowing myself at a deeper level and not understanding where I was foregoing uh, my needs in order to um, show up a certain way. And so I guess part of that might be people pleasing, but in that that type A way, like there's like a bit of that perfectionism and it's like at all costs. So I think part of it has been getting to know myself better too and recognizing where, yeah, it just wasn't, 
I wasn't showing up in a healthy way. Mm. And it's so cool that you're able to separate those two. Like, yes, there is this external force of um, this work culture where you're expected to go beyond, you're expected to keep giving, but then there's also the relationship where you're se- with yourself where you're perfectionistic in a way that you are unable to set the boundaries that you needed for that healthy kind of balance there. Yeah. Yeah. There's that narrative that we have with ourselves. Like if you say no, what does that mean? Like we kind of make meaning out of it. So if I weren't to get those extra things done and work that extra time and put in all this effort, does that make me lazy? Does that make me incompetent? Like there's mm-hmm. all these stories that we latch on to what it means to say no or rest or do less as a woman, especially. Yeah. And those stories are quite powerful as well. And those stories are what's going to stop you from being able to set those boundaries as well, because you attach meaning to it. And I I also see, I guess, in corporate uh more women more so than men a tendency to over explain mm. like if I'm saying no I'll give you like three paragraphs on why I'm saying no <laughs> but I don't see that as often with uh some of my male colleagues doesn't mean it's non-existent but just don't see it as often yeah I think there is a lot of that and again it's like with those narratives and I I do feel like there's um definitely a, a different way that men can show up in business versus the way women can. Um, I still think there's a stigma around proving yourself, proving um, your value as a woman um, in a room full of men. The industry I worked in was agriculture and it was male, mainly male. Um, So I was often in a room of executives and I either wouldn't speak up or like you said, you kind of have to give a lot more to try and, establish um your credibility right in a room Mm. too yeah when you did speak up did you feel as though like your opinions were valued um I think I worked with a lot of great people that actually would tell me like men that would be like we want to hear your opinion like we value your opinion that's and then there yeah and then there was other men where they were the stereotypical uh senior leader that didn't really take women seriously. So I I mean, there's all types in the corporate world. Totally. I'm really curious, like, it sounds like, and let me know if I'm making an assumption, but for your experience and how you help, it's specifically with women's burnout. So why are there like so many women burning out specifically? Yeah, it's actually one in three women in working in a corporate world right now are feeling burnt out. Wow. Uh, Yeah. I think, you know what, there's like, there's the reasons we kind of spoke about, but there's also, I believe this expectation or the requirement that puts women in a very masculine place on a day-to-day basis to survive in that world, to prove themselves, to be so logical, um, to kind of make their mark in the corporate world. And it's a very masculine space and it puts you in a very masculine energy all day, every day. Mm. Um, And it kind of ignores our feminine aspects that can actually be very valuable in the workplace. Those things of intuition, creativity, play. um, We're most powerful when we can marry those two together. But a lot of workspaces don't allow for that, or we've told ourselves that we can't show that side of ourselves or else we'll be seen as weak. Or um, like if we can't bring all of the logic to the table that our ideas won't be taken seriously. And so I think that's a massive part is just being forced to be in our masculine all day, every day um, and not having those outlets to incorporate the feminine side. Mm. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you in terms of like, I feel like in the corporate world, we're expected to produce at like a consistent level and execution and production is certainly the, the goal there. And a big reason why I started holistic fitness was that I noticed in the fitness industry as well, we were bringing that same 
kind of produce, produce, produce. I must make all these changes to my diet. I must go to the gym five times per week. And then the space for kind of meditation or dance or soccer or whatever you enjoy, like that feminine energy wasn't really embodied. Um, For people who may have not heard of like masculine and feminine or they've heard of it, but don't really know what it means. Could you define like what you mean by putting women in a masculine place um, or like masculine energy? Yeah, I'll do my best. Um, we we all have both masculine and feminine energy. Um, so the masculine energy is the logic, um, the very step-by-step, like results-oriented, um, very clear and with a lot of direction. And then the, the, the feminine side is more, like I said, like the intuitive side, the creative side, the playful side. Um, and when we're all in one or the other, so it's not good either way. So as a woman, especially if you're always in your masculine, it's just, it's like you're ignoring a whole half of yourself, a very important half of yourself. And the same can go for men, um, being in their mass or being in their masculine all day and ignoring their feminine, um, or vice versa. Like it doesn't matter, man or woman. We both have both parts of us and it's about finding that balance between the two um, to truly be able to like show up as your full self. Right. That makes total sense to be able to embody both. And certainly how I see it in the fitness industry is like doing movement you enjoy or infusing music that you enjoy or finding some sort of flow while you're doing something. Um, Mm -hmm. That stat though was crazy. One in three women are burnt out in the workplace. Like, you know, everyone listening to this has a job. Well, I don't want to say everyone, most people probably have a job listening to this. Um, How would you even, because I don't think I'm burnt out, but I produce a lot. How would you even know if you're burnt out? Some of the classic signs are, can sometimes be confused with depression. Um, Right. Just having like a lack of energy, like not feeling motivated to get up in the morning, uh, feeling stuck. Um, feeling like the money you make isn't worth it some days, you know, like it doesn't make up for the quality of life that you have. Um, Yeah, just like a a general sense of disconnection and indifference. Um, Mm -hmm. And even sometimes that comes through as anger and seeing yourself, the way I saw it actually was, it was like I was an out of body experience where I would see myself interacting and speaking with people in ways that didn't seem like myself. And I wasn't proud of it. It was, it would be like short tempered and one answer. And inside I was craving like connection and a great conversation, but I just, there was like that disconnect there. And that was a huge uh, sign of my burnout for sure. Mm, So it sounds like a huge sign is like, that lack of motivation, like things just feeling harder in general, but also like craving something, but you have that like an inability to kind of meet, meet halfway in, in, in what you're seeking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like wanting to have something more, but having that complete disconnect and not knowing what that is and how to get there. Mm, makes total sense. How did you like dig yourself out of that? where are you now? Like, are you full-time coaching in this now? And like, how did you kind of like figure out that purpose? Ah, that's a good question. Um, that was like so three I, questions. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I had mentioned that the stress took a toll on my health. And so I actually had to have, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. I had um, to get a tumor removed from my stomach. Jeez. And so that Yeah, that led me to kind of dive deeper into like, what's going on? Like, what can I do now that I have this diagnosis? And in Canada, I don't know here if um, doctors are kind of just less likely to recommend something, but they just said, if you have more pain, you have another surgery. And so it's very common. I think one in 10 women have endometriosis, but it's very common to have multiple surgeries and then scars all over your abdomen of where they've had to take the tumor out. So that was like, I was like, no, that's not a great, no, I'm going to do some more research. And the first thing was to remove inflammation through like anti-inflammatory diet. And so I changed my diet radically. And within one month, all of my symptoms went away. And it made me question like, okay, 
like why wouldn't they just tell people that like what's <laughs> what's the harm in telling someone to to eat a really clean diet and then it kind of made me ask more things so it led me into integrative health coaching and so that's what got my foot in the coaching door um but then i found a lot of my clients had almost more like existential questions of like what's more to life like what what else can i do like it's beyond the physical so i find that when we kind of have space so if we work, work through like fitness or diet it kind of creates that space then to dive a bit deeper and ask um, some deeper questions um, and so I did that with myself and I, I attracted clients that were doing the same and then that led me more into this purpose work um, from an energetic side as well I've developed my gifts of high sense perception so I, my intuitive side is very well developed and I'm able to tap into people's energy to to help them with like what innate gifts do they hold like what purpose do they hold and so I work with clients like on a very intuitive level tapping into that but I also integrate the structure and logic that I've had from the corporate world to have a really strong foundation and what that is and step by step working through what that looks like for you, um, what your values are, if you've never established that or you need to reestablish that. As women, I think we often live our life to other people's values. Um, so establishing, getting clear on what yours are, what your purpose and gifts are, and then creating like a vision and a plan based on that, not a rigid goal, because um, I think we can get lost in trying to achieve one very narrow thing. But just opening up what's possible uh, when you're living according to your purpose and your gifts. Right. That's awesome. I love that journey as well that, you know, you're very integrative now because you started with the nutrition side of things and and saw how much that helped you and and started helping your clients. And you're like, oh, wait, like really what's going on now? We've kind of lifted the curtain, so to speak. There's there's something else we've got to deal with. And it it kind of reminds me, I used to be on antidepressants because I, I had severe depression when I was 20 and people have this stigma about antidepressants, but for me, I'm like, antidepressants help me get from a one out of 10 to a three out of 10. Yes. It's nutrition, fitness, the existential crisis work that that actually worked for me long-term but the antidepressants were still helpful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's the, all these different tools that we pick up along the way to kind of get to where we're meant to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. It's like, you just need that little space, like that shift from that one to the three was probably the space that you needed or that energy you needed to look at the deeper things, right? For sure. Definitely. When did you have the courage to leave the corporate job? Was that when you got endometriosis? It was a health thing or did you like, once you studied, because that's the biggest leap I find, like somebody may discover, oh, I'm actually meant to be an artist full time, but I don't know if this is going to pay my bills. So I'd love for you to dive into that before we like look at some wins on those energy pieces and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think the first thing is to shift what purpose is, because I think we often link it to uh, a job. So being like, oh, yeah. my purpose is to be an artist. And then that's like a very narrow thing and it can be very scary and have a lot of stories around it of being like a struggling artist and not being able to make money and all of those things where purpose is really your essence or way of being that you can bring to so many things. Mm. And so reframing that and getting in tune with your true essence or way of being. So for some people that could be, uh, their purpose could be to lead a community of people. And so that could be leading a project at, your corporate world that could be starting a community outside of that it could be if you're an artist maybe it's starting a collective of artists like it can show up in so many ways and then the thing then that once was that scary thing that's like a needle in a haystack becomes this really exciting expansive way to look at oh my god I can incorporate my purpose every single day through like these 10 different things and before you know it, you're giving yourself so much energy because you're you're paying attention to that part of you that wants to be expressed. And that mm. is like God given to be recognized and supporting and serving the world around you, which people can see when someone is living in their purpose. Like you can see, even if it's like a barista at a coffee shop, 
if they're jamming out and doing their thing, you're like, wow, they're really doing their thing. Like it's recognizable. You can really feel it in someone else when they're doing that. Mm. Yeah. You're so right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So for me, it didn't, I didn't leave the corporate world right at that point. It took me, I guess, a couple of years of self-exploration and then COVID. Um, There weren't really many events going on with COVID. And so that kind of led to my exit um, to start to go into this coaching work full time. Um, I've had a few, I've tried to integrate my essence into a few different jobs that pay externally just to see like what that would feel like. Um, but the deeper I dive in this, I'm like, no, it's more of this. Like I, <laughs> the more you it kind of play around with those things, like you can't fail, you just learn. So the more I play around with my, my essence or way of being and how I'm expressing it, the more clarity that I get in what feels the best and what feels most aligned for me and which way it kind of flows and, and can, has a possibility of bringing in money. Are you tired of constantly feeling burnt out while trying to achieve your goals? Do you find yourself struggling to maintain motivation and productivity over long periods of time? I'd like to introduce you to the Goal Getting Journal, the ultimate solution for those of you who want to surpass their goals without burning out. Our journal is designed to help you set achievable goals, track your progress, and maintain a healthy work-life balance. With our journal, you'll discover practical strategies for managing stress, staying motivated and avoiding burnout, including time blocking, habit stacking, and so much more. You'll also learn how to prioritize your tasks and maximize your productivity so you can get more done in less time. The Goal Getting Journal is perfect for anyone who wants to achieve their goals without sacrificing their mental health and well-being. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a student, or just someone who wants to make any positive change in your life, the Goal Getting Journal can help you stay on track and avoid burnout. And for Holistic Fitness Podcast listeners, you can get 20% off your first journal using the code HFPODCAST. Go to goalgettingjournal.com and type HFPODCAST at checkout to get your discount. So what are you waiting for? Order the Goal Getting Journal today and start getting your goals without burning out. I love that you mentioned that because I do think people place a lot of value on what their purpose is and they attach it to what they do rather than why they do it. Um, And the way I I see purpose as well is like it's infused into every area of your life, your relationships, (laughs) your leisure, everything. Um, But we do have a lot of attachment into what we should be doing. And I think you bring up a great point. It's you kind of got to like find out. And the only way you find out is through execution. And the more you kind of take action, and I know that's very masculine energy, but like try a whole bunch of different things. That's how you figure out what lights you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And taking like the action taking is the masculine, but the feminine side is being intuitive and creative with what those things are. And so when you put those two together, like, yeah, you can't really fail. You're, you're out there, you're doing it. You're trying your, your, uh, your thing. You're trying to live with your purpose and your essence. I love that. Um, something that was really transformational for me, you mentioned it earlier was figuring out what your values are. So you're living life to your values rather than others. It took me a session with a cognitive behavioral therapist to figure it, to even figure out A, what my values were or B, like how to execute them in daily life. And and we use the kind of wheel of life, which is like relationships, finance, like all those different things to figure out where I was on the thing. And it was like, honestly, that one of the most transformational things for me, for anyone listening that doesn't know their values, like how would you suggest someone goes about figuring this stuff out? There is a book that a lot of values work is based on. It's called The Values Factor by John Demartini. Um, so that's the long story short. Um, I also mm-hmm. have a, a free tool that I give to my community um, that helps you get clear on your values as well. But it's a matter of assessing, like one way to look at it is what are you most organized in? Like what do you put the most energy into in your life? Like, is your pantry like next level organized in your fridge and you have this passion around food and nutrition? Like, 
is your closet extremely organized? Like what parts are you actually naturally putting a ton of energy into that you like putting energy into? Um, another thing is like a classic one you hear, like what do people come to you for? What do people ask for you advice on? Um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but once you kind of have a short list, um, kind of move, create a list, say it's 10 things and move through them being like group, group together things that make sense, um, to kind of like a higher level title of what that might be. So like examples of my values are wellness, um, spirituality is one expansion is one. So the expansion includes learning growth, like relationships, mm. like, so once you can kind of group them, um, move through that list to prioritize of like the top ones. So just pick the top four to five values. That's the easiest to work with and move through that list saying like, is number one more important than number two is number two more important than number three. And just make sure they're in the right order. And even that you'd have a ton of clarity around what your core values are. And then you can use that as a tool for discernment to make decisions moving forward and how you spend your energy, your time, your money moving forward. And so I've used it as a tool, especially in spending. I'd be like, is buying this thing in support of any of my values? Mm -hmm. Yes or no. And there's so many things where I'm like, no, I'm like, why would I buy this thing? Because my friend bought it and they told me about it. And then it was like their values now impacted mine in some way. So yeah, it's becoming, it helps you become very clear and aware of what you're putting your energy into. Mm, I love that you mentioned spending in line with your values as well, because I don't think, and and that's just not spending your money, spending your like money, energy, and resource, like, you know, you know, energy and time costs money in my opinion as well. And mm. my three values are health, positivity, and adventure. And adventure is like adventure of the mind, adventure of the body, adventure of the spirit, like just all the curiosity things, like mm -hmm. ask asking questions for a living, basically. Um, but it it wasn't before I'd done that and figured that out, I was like, I am spending so much money on things and time on things that are the opposite of healthy. Like <laughs> it's like the literal opposite, because like, oh, that'll be fun. Uh, maybe the the adventure and the healthy kind of um conflict with each other but you know <laughs> yeah At it's times, yes. transformational hearing that <laughs> yeah it's it's a big one for sure and then you can start to question like when you find you're out of alignment with your values you can start to question what's underlying that action like mm. what am i doing whose values are these like why would i have spent so much time and money on this thing when it didn't make my values like whose is that? And if you can identify it, like perhaps it was your parents' values that you inherited and just unconsciously have been living by, or I find even in the corporate culture, um, you can be greatly influenced by those people around you, especially as women, like whether it's the latest purse or spa or like, I don't know, there's just so many ways that I was influenced by the people around me. Um, so it's just bringing clarity to that so you can have those boundaries and be very strong and in integrity with your values and what actually matters to you. Mm, yeah, that's an awesome point, especially people you look up to, like your mentors. You can definitely mm -hmm. be easily swayed without questioning like, hey, does this align what's truly authentically me? Mm -hmm, definitely. Mm. How do you begin to shift other people's beliefs that you've inherited because getting rid of limiting beliefs can be difficult so how do you help clients um stay authentic especially when it's challenging because these things are out of habit um yeah well i use a practice i call targeted emotional release but it works mm -hmm. for emotions beliefs and patterns so once we identify what that might be in your life. So if it's that belief, even with the artists that artists are struggling, they don't make money. Like that's a limiting belief. And mm. if you carry that with you while trying to be a successful artist, you're, you're not going to have that success because you're underlying it all. You're carrying this belief. So 
once you can identify what those beliefs are that you want to shift that no longer align or no longer serve you to carry or to have um it's a, it's like a visualization process of seeing like where like tuning into yourself so almost like getting into a meditative state tuning into where you're holding that that energy that emotion that thought or belief and just giving your body permission to let it go like asking yourself am i ready to let this go yeah i am and then you know visualizing yourself pulling it out of your body and waving it goodbye and the important part there is instilling that new belief being like okay i'm letting this go and now i believe that artists can thrive that artists can be super successful that artists make a lot of money when they're tapped into their purpose and their passion and their gifts so with every belief that you want to shift make sure to spend some time on creating that new belief and what that is for you that's awesome that I can imagine that being such a powerful thing to visualize as well so it sounds like a that awareness is key but then b like using I guess the intuition or going inwards to really shift that and imagine some way of that like coming out of you viscerally and then Mm -hmm. inputting the new belief I guess the thing that's difficult like obviously it helps with a coach as yourself but the thing that can be difficult is sometimes that focus like how often do you kind of have to reinforce these new beliefs like could you do it in one meditation or is it often like a few that but yeah that's a really good question what I find is when I do like the initial one, it creates that awareness that it gives me space. So the next time that, that, that comes up, I'm not just automatically into it. It gives me that second of like, Oh, this is where I was about to think that thing again. And it allows me the space to choose the new, the new, um, more positive affirmation. So I find that the first one just helps create the space that you need to then reinforce it. And then it, I don't think it takes too long. Like what is it a month that usually it takes to create new habits? I would say that would be true um, in this work as well. That's awesome. That's so cool. And totally, I guess it's Trent. I, I don't guess like that's completely transformational, especially if we're using the example of like, I'm a struggling artist to I'm a thriving artist, changing that belief within a month. Like that's super cool. Yeah. It's important too to, Um, surround yourself with people that share those beliefs Mm -hmm. um, or that are examples of that belief being true so instead if you're following someone like an influencer on social media that's an artist that talks about how they struggle all the time you might want to replace that person Uh, maybe mute them still support them but mute them and replace them with someone that's showing how it's possible to thrive as an artist Yes, that's so important. Your environment, even your digital environment um, can transform because at the end of the day, they're examples of what's possible. Like if you're shopping for a Subaru Outback, all you can see is Subaru Outback. So it's a kind of similar thing. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? What are a few other easy, easy wins to get more energy? You know, if you're super burnt out, sometimes you just need that that easy one out of 10 to three out of 10 solutions. So how do you help people kind of get out of that slump? Yeah, there's some really easy things. Um, I get my clients to do an audit of their daily habits. So what are those things that are in your environment day to day that are just part of your subconscious that you don't even realize? So it's like tuning into a day or two, being very detailed, like writing down everything that you come across in your day. So what do you do when you first wake up? who you're following on social media, like what TV do you watch? What media you consume? What conversations are you having like with your partner at home or in the office? Like what are you coming in contact with throughout your day? And there's a lot of things that can be hiding there. And so my clients will find stuff like, I didn't realize that I, like part of it that I touch on is your negative um, self-talk. So that's an easy one. Well, easy, but not easy. But (laughs) if you notice yourself, uh, if you're shitting on yourself all day and you're saying all the things that you can't do, or I I found that I always had a single phrase that I would repeat. And it was like my go-to negative self-talk phrase. And I think we all have like a popular one probably. And so it's reprogramming that and 
even if all you do is replace that, like next time you catch it, replace it with, I love you with your name. So like, I love you, Jenna Lee. And that's all I did. And I, I replaced it within a month. And then I was telling myself, I love myself all the time. Like, it's interesting how draining even negative self-talk can be. Um, another thing is, yeah, with the habits, um, seeing like if you're watching reality TV and all they do is scream and yell at each other, that's not a good vibe, <laughs> you know, like it's not in support of good health, like of what you want to be. So there's some things that we can, tr we reach to for comfort that mm -hmm. are actually more draining than they are comforting. Yeah. Um, so it's tuning into those things, tuning into the energy of those things around you. Um, and what I, I coach people in is just breathing into it. Um, we can often sense the energy that something holds for us just by taking a deep breath in. And when you'll, you'll notice when something is expansive and positive, you can take a really deep breath in and like fill your whole lungs. And it feels great when you're holding that thing in mind. And if you're holding something in mind, say that reality TV show that isn't serving you and you take a deep breath in, you usually hit a limit like mid chest. It doesn't feel big and expansive. And so that's like a simple energy test that you can do. It's like, is this expansive or is this draining? And so kind of like use that as a gauge for everything that you come across with in your day. And you can usually immediately find something in um, like one or two things that you can shift immediately um, and have influence over without like having to get buy-in from everyone around you to change. But you can shift in the immediate future and tomorrow wake up intentionally doing something different, giving yourself mm. more energy. That's such a tactile tool as well that people can use. And I'm so glad you mentioned it. In fact, I was thinking about Love is Blind while you were giving me that. <laughs> and I can tell you, I had a very expansive breath generally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you it's go. It's because I analyze the psychology the whole time though. So I use That's that the thing. To it's, analyze it's... the psychology and how, <laughs> how people can improve. And but the thing is, is um my boyfriend, he's nervous during the yeah, arguments, yeah. but he can watch a thriller and it'll energize him. And I'm, as you mentioned, not breathing the whole yeah. time. I'm like, I do not enjoy these thrillers. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, is it's it's unique to each person. So yeah. <laughs> I, like, I can't blanket say don't watch reality TV because for you, it energizes you. And for someone else, it energizes them. And then it's, so it's just noticing what you're taking in and how it actually makes you feel. Cause I think the same goes for uh, nutrition and fitness too. Like mm. you can't blanket statement, prescribe something to everybody because everyone is so unique and a hit workout for someone Actually, this is something I've talked about before. It's like a HIT workout, a high intensity workout for someone that's already in burnout and fight or flight is actually going to amplify their stress hormones. Mm -hmm. So like you can't, you really have to be able to tune in to where you're at and how things are impacting you in that moment. Mm, no, you're so right. And I mean, you trigger people with conversations like this because I I frequently speak about um, running and hit on cortisol and how mm. running and hit actually isn't helping you lose weight for some people. Like if you're super burnt out and that's why it's all about get your goals without burning out, you're much better doing like yin yoga and long walks until you manage your stress. And if you yes. enjoy it, then go back into it. Um, it. But you're so right. Like whether it's watching reality TV, your, you know, soul path or your purpose or whether it's fitness or nutrition, we are also individual, which is why your tool of that breath work, like really tells you whether your body's at ease with something or not. It's such a good tool to take away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very simple one that you can do discreetly anywhere you are, like even in the grocery store with food, if you're picking <laughs> out something, you know, like, nope, that's not a kind <laughs> get... of ice cream. Yeah. I get so cerebral with it though. Cause I, I had a, um, uh, she's, She's a psychologist and uh, astrologer and she does like somatic work and she gave me that mm -hmm. tool. And because I've got a lot of like cerebral energy and I just like, 
will overthink it sometimes. And I'm like, okay, Laurie, you need to come back to this breathing exercise between these two things because you're just like manipulating some sort of breath right now. <laughs> it's like when I realize I'm in my head too much, it's like you're doing the exercise not quite right. <laughs> yeah, a good, a good uh, point to note is if you are like elevated to kind of try to ground yourself a bit first so that you can tune into it from like a more neutral place. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> We've spoken about lots of different things today with regards to burnout, but, you know, before we move to the final question, I do have a final question on this podcast. Okay. Do you have any thoughts, any questions or anything else that you wanted to share before we um, move to the final question? Yeah, I'm curious, um, even in your journey and what you see with your clients, like how do you transform burnout or what do you see the relationship that people or yourself have had with burnout in the past? Hey, Holistic Fitness fam, a quick message from one of our sponsors, Ned. As you all know, I recommend good nutrition, movement, and stress management practices before supplementing so you know what type of supplementation that your body actually needs. For me, I supplement with very few products, but Ned is one of them. I am a type A, high energy, ambitious business girly with massive goals. And sometimes I honestly just need to chill out and relax a bit. I've found that both Ned's de-stress and sleep blends fit in with my busy lifestyle and ambitious goals, but I was honestly not a big fan of CBD products before trying Ned, mostly because of the culture surrounding weed. I just didn't want something that was going to alter my state of mind so that I became much less of a goal getter or less ambitious. That was until I learned about full spectrum hemp and their benefits. Ned blends a chock full of premium CBD and a full spectrum hemp of active cannabinoids. Ned's full spectrum hemp oil nourishes the body's endocannabinoid system to, uh, to offer functional support for stress, sleep, inflammation, and balance. These products are science-backed, nature-based solutions that offer an alternative to prescription and over-the-counter drugs. All of Ned's products are... All of Ned's full spectrum hemp oil is extracted from USDA certified organic hemp plants grown by an independent farmer named Jonathan in Colorado. I'm obviously a big fan, but don't take just my word for it. Ned CBD products have over 2,000 five-star reviews and they work with incredible partners in the medical field like Dr. Caroline Leaf, Dr. Christian Gonzalez and Dr. Will Cole. Ned is providing Holistic Fitness podcast listeners a very special discount. If you'd like to give Ned a try, listeners get 15% off Ned products with the code Lori Lee, L-O-R-I-L-E-E. -E. Thanks, Ned, for sponsoring the show and offering a natural remedy to bring balance to so many people's well-being. Yeah, I love this question. And it's similar to what you mentioned with regards to the relationship with yourself. So I think I notice perfectionism and imposter syndrome, those thought patterns contribute to burnout a lot. And I don't want to blame the human experiencing it, but the only thing that we're in control of is ourselves. So if we can pinpoint where that perfectionism is coming from and where that imposter syndrome is coming from, that tends to help people greatly. But it is also when people are experiencing a bunch of friction as well. Friction, whether that's hating their boss, friction, whether that's not enjoying their job because it's not aligned with their zone of genius, friction, whether they don't feel heard, friction, whether there's too much inflammation in the diet or friction, whether I don't get enough movement and now my lymph lymphatic system isn't good. And I do find that it's trial and error to get out of burnout. Um, for me personally, because I have been in burnout previously, and when I'm experiencing the precipice or the start of burnout, like as you mentioned, that depression state, I've been in and out of that before. Previously, it was me not knowing myself and not having, not knowing my values. That's why I went to a cognitive behavioral therapist and I didn't know my mission. My mission is clear as day now, which is basically my purpose. I'm here to help create a ripple effect of ki kindness. So basically when I smile at someone in the shopping center, they smile back at me mm -hmm. and I can do that in my job as a corporate leader. And, you know, uh, I'm a VP of customer experience for two software companies. I can do that on this podcast. I can do this, that on social media. I can do that in my relationships. And I think that's what makes me not burnt out to kind of produce quite a lot. 
But the other thing that burns me out specifically, I'm not sure if it's triggers from childhood, I'm sure it is, um, or if it's just from being a human being as well, is when I don't feel seen, heard and valued. And that's generally if I don't like my leader. So there's a big thing, like, you know, people leave managers, people don't leave companies. Like that's yeah. a big rhetoric. That is true for me. If I yes. feel like, if I feel like I'm not being heard or seen or valued, I, that's one way straight to burnout for me personally. Yeah. That's a very important thing to note too, is that even often when we don't feel that way, um, especially like from a manager, it's usually more indicative to their relationship with themselves. Because when we're like, when you're spreading kindness, um, doing your thing, smiling at everyone, like you are in tune with that part of yourself that's in full expression. And you can, you're easily in tune with other people around you too. Mm. It's very much like a, a place of centeredness. And so often when a manager or someone that we're, we're in relationship with whatever form of relationship that is that isn't able to offer us that it's usually a reflection of their state um, where they're at with themselves or what point of their life that they're in right now where they're just really disconnected because it impacts your ability to connect with yourself is what impacts you most in your ability to connect with other people and so if you're unable to offer someone um, to see them for their gifts or to hear them or to listen, it's usually a reflection of where you're at right now. So that is so true with corporate, leaving a boss, not leaving the company. Um, yeah, that's an interesting take. Mm. Thanks. And I mean, that actually even lightened that for me, like that explains to me why I get so drained from those scenarios is because... Um, it's in complete misalignment with my purpose. And I think it's mm -hmm. easy when you smile at someone in a shopping center and they don't smile back to say, Hey, they've had a hard day. I like, I'm doing my best here. And knowing that whether it's the podcast or the fitness training or the yoga teaching, I'm helping increase other people's energy. But when you're at work day in, day out, and you're constantly met with the opposite of your value. So I think very similar to what you were saying before, like that's when I personally get really burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's completely understandable. Yeah. Any other final thoughts before we ask the final question? Uh, I don't think so. I'm ready for this question. I'm excited for this final question. Yeah. I recently changed it as well. So if you've been <laughs> listening, it's, it's similar, but I changed it slightly. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, your 70 year old self, if mm. you were to meet with her today, like right now, what advice do you think she'd give to you right now? I I would say it would be like, speak your voice, express yourself fully. Don't hold parts of yourself back. Um, yeah, I think that's so important. It's something that I've been working on for a long time. Um, it's a work in progress, but I can just see my seven-year-old self just letting it all out, you know? <laughs> yes. There's something about like when you've experienced life that there's a bit of like this, like, I don't give a shit anymore and yeah. I'm just going to fully be me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that. I think we need to bring that energy like to younger and younger ages in our life. And I think that's the magic of being fully expressive um, in your gifts and your purpose. For sure. Oh, I think that's really cool that, you know, you know, exactly the thing that, you know, I think we're always growing, always learning. And you mentioned one of your values is expansion. It's cool that you're really like clear on the expansion right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Awesome. I'm sure so many people, uh, like especially those of us in corporate jobs, are curious about your work, curious about like how you got out of it, especially anyone like kind of hating their jobs or hating their life in general. Um, so yeah. how can we get in touch with you to learn more about your work? Yeah, I'm mostly on Instagram. My handle is at expert.u. Um, my website is beexpertu.com. Um, and yeah, those are my main platforms. I work primarily with women, but actually in the last week, I've had a few men raise their hands. And so I'm in the progress of uh, making sure my program's transferable to men too, but I see so much importance in everyone living in their purpose. So yeah, I'm really passionate about helping people. I love that branding as well. Be the expert of you. 
Like exactly. that's so important, but we like yeah. don't think about gaining an NBA in Jenna Lee or an NBA in Lori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Funnily enough, like most people who listen to this podcast are women, but I have a higher percentage of men buying my goal getting journal. Don't know how that mm. works out with the co- conversion stats, but it's like, it's awesome. I'm here to support yeah. everyone, but it's really interesting. Well, and if you think about the title goal getting journal, like that's a masculine, very like, masculine title. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> but there it. is pink on it. I mean, not to like, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure maybe that's not a PC thing to say, but pink <laughs> is my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Well, it's been, I've had a pleasure uh, chatting to you, Jenna Lee, and thank you so much for joining the podcast. And yeah, looking forward to chatting again. Yeah, thank you so much. And for everyone listening to the podcast, whether you're in the car, cleaning the home, whatever you're up to today, eat well, move well, breathe well, and until next...